Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jeter Steady through the rigor, yeah I'm getting bigger Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like Seven enemies that millionaires avoid but Seven enemies, if you want to become a multi-millionaire These are things you need to avoid Number one, long term is going to be depending less on your talent Pretty soon you're going to have to depend on systems and processes Amanda, you're telling me you never read the book uh, Cash Flow Quadrant, right? Yeah. So here's part of the Cash Flow Quadrant process. Robert, uh, Robert Kiyosaki wrote this book called Cash Flow Quadrant. The top left quadrant stands for E, stands for? Employee. Employee. The bottom left stands for? Self-employed. Self-employed, okay. Amanda, most people in America, are they living paycheck to paycheck or are they financially free? Most people. Paycheck. They're paycheck to paycheck, right? Yeah. You know why? Because 90% of people in America make their money here. They're W-2 employees working for somebody or they're 1099 working for themselves. The only way they make money is by punching the clock in, punching it out, or salary, or they have to create a transaction. And what did the pandemic teach us last year? Somebody tells you whether or not you can work, essential or not essential, jab or no jab. Or somebody says yes or no based on your sale or transaction, they're the ones that control your transaction, not you. That's why 90% of people live paycheck to paycheck. And sadly, with most salespeople, they have so much debt until they sell something, by the time they sell something, they end up paying, re repaying back the debt. And then they crank the debt back up again until they sell something, and then when they sell something to get the commission, they end up paying back the debt again. So they're always working from behind. Unless they have the financial discipline to only live on 25 or 30% of what they make, which a lot of people don't, yeah, there's a lot of people won't do. Let me ask you a question. How much income do you think we live on now? How much, how much expenses do you think we live on now? How much leftover cash do we have now? <laughs> what, what, by the way, I was making 20,000 years as a sergeant in the Marines. You know what the coolest part is? Babe, can we save 20,000 this week? Save and invest? So this, this, is our income, this is our income so far. I'll show this to you. This, this is our income so far for the first half of October. $4,777.26. From building a system and process. Right? Like, okay, now, now my, remember we were joking about my banking relationship before? Yeah. Okay, you know what it is today? <laughs> okay, bankers, where's my bankers at? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, hey. If you're a teacher, you're either private banking or private You gotta get it right. <laughs> before I was walking, like, now I'm walking in, like, hey. Shoulders back. <laughs> yes, yes, it is Mr. Sapa. Mr. Sapa, would you like to have a seat? I would. <laughs> Can we get you coffee? Sure. How do you take your coffee? Like my wife, light brown and strong. <laughs> oh, I guess we, you think I've done this once or twice? Yeah. Uh, guys, before I said, I role play this. This is how you can respect me in the bank. Right? I was sharing a story. I was sharing a story of residual income. I go into the bank as a complete fragment of this bank that residual income started building up in his bank. Because I was broke at one point, and thank God residual income was still kicking in. I go to the bank, I said, man, is it all the residual, is that the, uh, what do you call it, all the uh, overdraft charge you can refund? Yeah. Well, in this account, I got another account. What else do I got left in there? Uh, can I pull out at least 20 bucks? Sure you can, because you got $15,000. What? We got, how much do I got in there? Yeah, $15,000 in there. You gotta be kidding me. I haven't checked that account in two years. Well, right here, show me the screen. <laughs> That's you, right? Yeah. That's you, right? Yeah. That's your address, right? Boom. <gasps> From where? Show me the deposits. Boom, boom, boom. Insurance company. Boom, boom. Insurance company. Boom, boom. Insurance company. Boom, boom. God, that's the business that you're in? I said, I want $15,000 on a counter right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we need about 20 minutes. We need to get the cash. No, I'll, I'll head right here and give me some coffee while you're at it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Arch, 15 straps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's real, that's legit. Yes, sir, here you go, would you like a bag? I said, no, put it back in the account. <laughs> <laughs> give, me, give me the original $20 I want. <laughs> A, a tear, I was leaving the bank, a tear was dropping from my eye. I picked the 
right industry, man. I picked the right career. Let me, let me, take, let me take this thing seriously. Okay. So, <laughs> so now, now, in order to get to where the rich get richer, you got to build a, business. what's top right? Business. business. And then eventually you want to become an investor. Remember I was sharing this story earlier this morning about Uncle Nearest? Mm -hmm. Because it is. So what is a business? A business, according to Robert Kiyosaki, is 500 plus independent contractors, employees, brand ambassadors, people that represent your company. And they're running a system and a process. Not on talent. Guess what, Guess what sales guys need? Talent. talent. Short term, they make a lot of money. Short term, the sales guys make more money than you. Long term, boom, the business guys, the business people, long term, those guys. Did you see the income that we made four or five years into it? 65,000 from my own personal plan, but $1.2 million from, from override, from yeah. passive income, residual income, yeah. That's because we decided to build a business, business and you can too. That's why you're here. So the question for you is, if you're here, wouldn't it be more valuable to have you and more of your team here next time we do this? Yes. That's why MMAs are so valuable. Okay, that's, that's enemy number one. Number two, second enemy. Good enough mentality. Yeah, I got it, I'm good enough. You think, Cash flow millionaires want to be good enough? No, no. I made it good enough here, good enough there. Yeah, I got, you know, I already got the rest of the week. I got what's supposed to get done in the rest of the week. I get it done by Wednesday, even though I can take off the rest of the couple days. Uh, it's good enough anyway for this week. I'll just wait till next week to get it done. That's not the way you become a multimillionaire. You say, oh my gosh, I got done by Wednesday, what normally got to be done by Friday. Imagine if I double up this week. That's how cash flow millionaires think. That's how championship mindsets think. Well, what do I think about? Good enough, is this just a good enough experience? Some of you guys are just happy to getting a free meal. You know what started to happen to me the last couple of years? I started getting picky with food. <laughs> it's like, I like I was never picky with food. Like, if you give me a free meal, brah, what, for free, give me two, brah. You know these days? I'm sorry, is this chicken dry? <laughs> I'm sorry, my salmon is medium rare. <laughs> Right? That, that's the type of conversation I have right now. At, I'm sorry, uh, why did you valet my car all the way in the back? You know what I drive, right? How come you don't put it in the front? Like you, you ask, because you, now you're starting to expect certain things because you, now you expect more of yourself. So good enough is never a millionaire mentality. Good enough, and just keep this in mind. Millionaires always want to refine the process, optimize their systems and processes, and always working in a spirit of excellence. Did I say perfection? Excellence. So, if you got something good, great. Can I do it better? For example, uh, Ivan here showed me a screenshot from Stephen Curry. You know what Stephen Curry says in his, in, in that, uh, in that, in that, uh, in his practice? He says a perfect shot is not a perfect shot unless it's a perfect swish. I can't hit rim. Even though it goes in a bucket. It's all net. And guess what he dials it in with? Technology, arc, form, finger spread. They watch videos. And how can he have a more perfect shot? Stephen Curry, the NBA's most prolific three-point shooter in the history of the NBA, still wants a perfect shot. Because to, to him, when they start in practice, even if he makes the bucket, if it hits the rim, it's not counted as a shot. It's got to be a swish. <laughs> so, so he is taking his game to the next Level, because he wants to perfect his craft. So millionaires never settle for good enough. Number three, this is uh, one we might spend a little time with. Millionaires avoid toxic behaviors. Not necessarily toxic people, because do people have the ability to change? Should you judge them? No. What happens if somebody decides to have one of those painstaking moments, they decide to change, they're no longer toxic. You still love on them, right? Yeah. But you avoid toxic behaviors. What's some of these toxic behaviors? Jealousy. Envy. 
envy, victim. What else? Complaining. Compl Ooh, that's a big one. Okay, procrastinators. You can see, you guys are naming them. You guys should be doing this training, right? Laziness. What else? Self pity. Manipulations. For example, have you ever heard of somebody tell their sob story to always new groups of people? Like, oh, he told you that too about his story? Oh, he told you about the reason why they can't perform is because they are this, the way they grew up? Oh, he told that story to you too? Oh, he told you that story about the reason why he can't perform is because he went through that? Like, for example, we had, uh, we had business playing with one of our uh, couples yesterday, Iris and Enoch. If you know anything about Iris and Enoch, they grew up in the hood in Humble Park in Chicago. If you go on the History Channel and you look for gangland, they show gangland, the neighborhood they grew up had one of the most prolific gangs they did a documentary on, okay? So they grew up with all sorts of uh, terrifying upbringing. Stuff that would just make you humble. Anyway, this one lady, she was complaining about how her upbringing was. Here's Iris. You have no clue who you're talking to. You got no clue who you're talking to. The difference between me and you is that I did something about it and you're still talking about it and you're talking about it to other people. And the reason why you're talking to other people about it is because you're trying to re essentially recruit a pity party. You're actually trying to manipulate people to say, okay, the reason why you shouldn't expect a lot from you is because you went through this upbringing. So you, you basically want to be left off the hook. Not in this environment though. Guess what? If you had a perfect life, you wouldn't be part of PHP. You've been Harvard, Stanford, Dartmouth, Yale. You've been in politics, right? You've been in corporate America, right? But you're not. Something in your life went wrong. And you're here at PHP. <laughs> Welcome to a bunch of ragtag, I want to become better type of organization. You're it. This is it. So don't think you got to be perfect to be here. I think I explained enough of my story to show that Sheena and I are way from perfect. Okay? So you got to avoid people that are manipulative. Okay, those are, those, are, those are toxic behaviors. Comparing yourself to others. Why shouldn't you compare yourself to others? How many times have you been on Instagram or social media like, oh my gosh, your TikTok, they're so awesome. You're comparing yourself, just do your thing. Just do your thing. I, 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 uh, we interviewed a guy uh, uh, last week, his name is uh, Jaspreet, right? He runs a YouTube channel called Minority Mindset. Okay, he's a, he's a Sikh, he wears a turban. Right? You think, he get, you think he gets harassed if I'm wearing a turban? Yeah. And he's talking about wanting to become a, and he lives in Detroit. Wow. <laughs> Poor guy. But he runs a media company now, right now helping people with personal finances. And even he said, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a scenario here, you, you got to stop complaining about your situation. You can always do something about it. You got to avoid chronic critter, quitters. You know, when, when, uh, when we uh, find somebody and say, hey, I want to join your firm. I want to be part of your company. Really? Why? Well, as I'm at this company, and it's not good over here, so that's why if I come over there, it's going to be much different. Nah, sorry. Nope. A player is going to be a player. A player is going to be a player regardless of, their, regardless of their team. Right? Guys, are we on, well, if they're in the financial services industry, we're in the financial services, are we in the same league? Yeah. Yes. If they're complaining that their team sucks, guess what eventually starts happening when they get over here? They're going to say the same thing about you. Because they're not the problem. And they're chronically quitting. How many times you ran across somebody's business card? Yeah, I do real estate. Yeah, I do forex. Yeah, I do Bitcoin. Yeah, I do credit repair. Yeah, I do travel business. Yeah, I do this. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I do this. How much money have made? Not much. They're chronic quitters. It's hard. Okay, let me find someone. Oh, it's hard. Oh, let me find someone. Oh, it's hard. Hey, everything is going to be hard. And you'll never become a multimillionaire thinking that everything's easy. But here's the cool, cool part. Once you say, okay, it's hard, let me double down. Boom. Oh, it wasn't that hard after all. Oh, let me, oh next time it's hard, let me double down. Oh, that wasn't that hard. Pretty soon your hard becomes easy. How many of you think right now that making $100,000 a year is hard? Making, okay, you got high, high profile people here. What about 250? <laughs> oh, it's 100,000 easy. Let's say 250, 250, 250 hard, 500,000 is hard. 
How, okay, let me ask you this question. How many people in your family that you're raised with are making 250000 a year le legally? <laughs> okay, 500000 750 million bucks. You can't, you can't raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> okay, one, okay? So in other words, you guys are speaking a language that nobody in your friends and family has ever spoken before. Fair enough to say? Yeah. Like, you're, bro, you're talking Chinese. I know, that's called millionese. You're speaking brokenese. I speak millionese. You get it? Hashtag, this, this hashtag, right? The reason why you don't get it is because you're a chronic quitter, because you want to adopt a new language. So instead of adopting a new language, a new behavior, a new activity set, you decide to quit instead. Let me go back to something that's good and easier. By the way, is living an okay life okay? Sure. You're just not gonna live, you're just not gonna live a great life. And if you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, you're not gonna get there. Okay, next one. So far so good? Yes. Number four. If you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, the enemy you must avoid is losing paranoia. I, uh, I used to wear this bracelet called, before it broke, it's called Power of Broke. Okay? Um, if you ask me today how much money I carry on myself, I carry about four or five hundred bucks. Uh, if anything, I have a credit card. Um, I don't have access to our personal account, so I don't know how much money we actually have in the bank account. The only way I know how much money we have in the bank account is I ask my wife. But for the purpose of me seeing my bank account, guess what I see? Zero. Because it keeps me, keeps me paranoid. Okay? Keeps me paranoid. Yo, dog, I need to go wide. So, think about this. I flipped it around, but the same level of paranoia that got to me seven figures. How, how many guys have ever said this? Man, once I get to a million bucks, I'm never going to do that. Right? Here's the thing. You don't know. You don't know, you've never been to seven figures before. You don't know how comfortable life starts to become. Some of you don't know how comfortable life starts to become at 250. She, Sheena said, hey Matt, if we go over our, our cash flow, we start feeling a little bit of freedom, food freedom at 250. What do you mean by food freedom? You ever gone to a restaurant, Matt? You go to a restaurant, you go, okay, okay, what do we want? Oh, that looks good, ooh. Oh, you go for the, ooh, ooh, that one. And then your eyes go to the right. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can't afford it. <laughs> and then you, what do your eyes do? Instead of going back to the left, it goes up. Oh, I can afford it. Oh, I got, what is that? Soup and salad. <laughs> Let me get the wedge. <laughs> Top of Jurassic Caesars. And give me more free bread and water. <laughs> so Sheena said we started feeling food freedom at 250. That we can go to any restaurant without worrying about what to slide at 250. We can go to Whole Ripoff, or Whole Foods, excuse me. We can go to Whole Foods. <laughs> buy organic, buy free range, buy, you know, whatever. At 250. Now we started feeling family freedom at $500,000, meaning that we can retire one side of the parent. We start feeling a little bit more financial freedom at 750, meaning that I can call any dealership instead of me going to the dealership and negotiating a price. I negotiate on the phone, and when I get to my house, I slide the credit card, I cut my check. I don't, yeah, I don't go. I, when we moved to Dallas, we bought two cars, we never went to the dealership. I said, I like this car. Give me, uh, when you come to my house, bring me the white one, give me the black one based on the one I like, based on the option you're willing to give me, and the dealer you're about to cut me, I'll cut you a check right there. And so we just need a deposit. Okay, here's my credit card right now. Run my credit card. That's how we bought the car. When I got to the car, great, run, run the remaining balance. The reason why I run the credit card well, for the car is because I want the points. <laughs> right? Because the point, by the way, how do you think we got here? Points on the airline. I don't, I don't pay for this stuff. Right? Outside, outside of this, I, how do I pay for Ivan to get here? Because they don't pay for, they pay for me. That's what, that's what uplines do. They pay for me. I pay for Ivan, though. Because, you know, they don't, they don't pay for him. I pay for him. Guess how I paid for his flight? Points. Okay? The, the, uh, the hotel we're staying at tonight, right? I said, uh, one room for the both of us, but king size bed, please. <laughs> I didn't even know. I didn't even know. You didn't know. 
Right? <laughs> you done editing? Are you done editing, Ivan? <laughs> When's the next TikTok reel? <laughs> Why do you think I'm on like that? Because I'm paranoid. Hey, hey, Ivan. You have the YouTube channels are kicking our butt. Let's kick some content out. <laughs> when are we going to record our next episode? I never lose paranoia. Never lose paranoia. By the way, if you don't want to become this, go ahead. Remove paranoia from life. Watch what happens. How many guys would ever say like this? Man. That car, look at that Mercedes Benz, look at that BMW, man. If I ever owned that thing, it'd never be that dirty. Anybody ever said it growing up? Yeah. If I had a house like that, man, I'd, shh, I'd, do, I'd do it as a car. I yeah, right, right. And then you, then you own the car. Yeah. Like, oh shit, man, it's a pain in the ass to keep this thing clean. It's <laughs> a pain in the ass. Yeah. But the biggest pain in the ass owning that Rolls Royce, it can't have any dust on it, ever. Pain in the ass, keep that. <laughs> That's why Patrick just got a truck. <laughs> Patrick, forget this thing. When he got rid of the Rolls Royce, he just got himself an F-150 Ford truck this, this big. Right? There's paranoia, though. Cannot lose paranoia. Can't be satisfied financially. Why? Listen, you know, uh, and some of you guys, in, in, well, Matt, you know, the Bible says to be content. Well, we unpack the definition of content back to the Latin definition. How many times do you realize that certain things are translated into English lose their meaning? Yes. So when I, when I unpack the word contentment in English and I go back to the original Greek, the Greek and Hebrew, content means to be confined, to be limited. So I think the translation is wrong. Because I don't think God, an unlimited God, wants us to be limited here on earth. You see what I'm saying? So I think the meaning is to continue to express yourself, to continue to grow, to continue to evolve. And for me, I cannot lose paranoia by not, by not uh, I can't evolve without losing paranoia. All right, number five. Lacking urgency. You want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire? You want to run a million point base shop? You want to run a million dollar agency? Well, you better rock with urgency. What, what do I mean by that? More specifically, avoid the word Tomorrow. Yeah, I'll get it done tomorrow. Yeah, I'll get it done next week. Avoid? That word's a toxic word. Avoid the word eventually. Yeah, eventually I'll get there. Versus now. By the way, this word eventually is usually not spoken. This word is not spoken. Guess where, how this word is expressed? By your actions. Whoa. For example, ah, uh, you know, I just come to one BOM a week. They, I mean, they talk about the same stuff anyway, right? Ah, uh, you know what? When's training over with? I mean, is it like eight weeks or is it 12? It's on going, right? Can we get done by 10 o'clock? It's not an urgent mindset. It's a nine to five mentality. Guess what entrepreneurship is? Is it a nine to five mentality or when I wake up? to when I go to sleep mentality. Yeah. That's why we're wired differently. That's why if you want financial freedom, you must rewire yourself differently. Just keep this in mind. Success loves speed. Success loves speed. What do you see when you go to Starbucks and you see a long line? Why do you deal with a long line? Because you know it goes through what? Quick yeah, it's a long line, right? But eventually, quickly, you'll get there. Right? Bobby, you see a long line at the, driver's, at the drive-thru. What's, what's, your, what's your hack to get your coffee faster? You go inside. Boom! That's it. You park the car, you go inside. Guess what? Nobody's inside. Yeah. Oops! To become a multimillionaire, you got to go opposite. Because everybody wants to sit in their ass in the drive-thru. Yeah. By the way, next time you go to Starbucks, do a video. Tag me in it. Matt told me, if I want my coffee faster, just test, by the way, test me in this. Test me this, right? Next time you do a video, I'm going to Starbucks, long line, pull up, Matt, long line behind me, but if I go inside, I bet you there's no line. You go inside, there's a line, no line. Next video you do, okay? And, I, and if you do that, I reshare it, I'll reshare my profile. Uh, number six, okay? 
Bad personal habits. Bad personal habits. Okay? What are some of the bad personal habits? Drugs? Alcohol? Gambling? Okay? Sex, I've got nothing wrong with sex. <laughs> Ask Sheena. <laughs> Married life is awesome, man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no, no, now, with who you have sex with, right? So, as this office continues to grow, you're going to attract singles. And guess what happens? This is not a meat market. Our offices aren't meat markets, right? Now, with that being said, chances are, if you do this business right and you show up on the Leaders Bulletin, guess what starts to come your way? Other champions, they show up on the Leaders Bulletin. So if you want to be attracted to somebody, make sure they show up on the what? Leaders Because <laughs> just because you date them, well, they're a bum now, but if I date them, they'll be a champion. Nope. They gotta prove themselves to be a Champion first. They have championship qualities, okay? But drugs, alcohol, gambling. You know, even if you watch the movie, uh, what's that movie? Breaking Bad. You ever see Breaking Bad? The, the, uh, uh, the show on, uh, what show is that? Basically, it was a high school teacher. Check this out. This is why you need, if, if you got a life insurance policy, the show would never happen. But... <laughs> So the teacher finds out he's going through can he's gonna get cancer. Right? And he's like, man, I got no life insurance. <laughs> Seriously though, I'm gonna leave my family with nothing. So what does he decide to do with one of his students? He's a chemistry teacher. So they decide to create meth. So they start dealing drugs. So he partners up with a student, his student creates the meth, and he goes out and sells drugs just to have enough money. By the time he dies with cancer, enough for his wife Skylar and the baby to have money. Well, guess what happened? He got healed from cancer. <laughs> but he kept with the drug dealing and became one of the biggest drug dealers. And anyway, one of our, one of our VPs was, was part of that movie. His name is Lou Pimber. Okay, yeah, he's one of the, he's one of the extras. You know, you know Lou and Rondo Pimber? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Movie Star. Yeah. So that movie, uh, that show would have never happened if he had a what? Life insurance policy. If he had a life insurance policy, he would have never gotten into drug dealing. Anyway. Back to drugs, even one, of the, even one of the drug dealers said, listen, I don't deal with, I don't even do business with people that take their own product. That, 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 yeah. that take their own product that sell. You know what I'm talking about? The drugs. If you're, if you're hooked on the drugs, you, you're hooked on your own supply. Yeah. Instead of you selling it, instead of you selling it, you're going to be hooked on it. I can't trust you. Yeah. Even drug dealers don't even trust drug users. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so th this is, these are things. Uh, one of our MDs, his name is Manny Vargas. He's out of the uh, Orlando office. He was raised in the streets, Dominicano, right? Had, had uh, literally, he was a pimp. In the streets, had strip clubs up here in Orlando, the, the, the whole hood rat, right? Anyway, PHP would convert him. <laughs> he's, 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 he's a completely different guy. I mean, the guy's got neck tattoos, the whole thing. If you guys went to convention, he's the one that came up on stage and did a rap jam. That's, that's Manny. Oh, that's, that's, cool. that's, that's Manny, okay? Because I told him, you do this, you do this, I'll reward you sometime on stage. He did it, right? So he used to hang with 50 Cent, he used to hang with all these guys, he used to be a hip hop artist. Anyway, he's one of our MDs in Orlando. Anyway, we go to Vegas. He's sitting amongst all the leaders, Patrick, Mason, me, MSM, MDs, and VPs. And he's, he's looking around. Manny, what's up? Okay, it's, it's 12 o'clock. And? <laughs> when are we rolling out the drinks? Oh, we're, what drinks? We're, we're, we're fine with, we're drunk on success. <laughs> What are you talking about? No, bro, you, you guys ain't going to the clubs? For what? Bro, we're in Vegas. No, that, that's not the way we roll. He's like, he was blown away. He's like, I can't believe we're in Vegas. Nobody's on drugs. Nobody's drinking. Right. <laughs> You're right. We're, we're, listen, you want a high? You guys want a high? That will never go, that will never go away. That will last the longest. Yeah. You know what the high is? Winning. Winning. Become a cash, cash flow millionaire. This all thing right here. This goes away. This goes away. This goes away. By the way, gambling, I don't like gambling. If I'm putting money in something, I want to be able to find a way to control it so I get my money back. Do I have that with gambling? I don't have that with gambling. This, is a, this is, for me, is a gamble. If I put X amount of time, if I follow the system and the process, what I share with you on the screen will eventually happen. 
whether eventually or now. It's up to, it's up to you. It's predictable. All you got to do is just put in the work. Uh, we talk about the four G's, right? You guys hear about the four G's? First G, greed. Second G, gambling. Three, gluttony. By the way, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of a sweets here and there. Lord knows I'll let me some Chips Ahoy and uh, some, uh, some ice cream and some, uh, some caramel covered, strawberry covered, whatever. <laughs> I'll let me some sweets, okay? And yes, there is a formula for you to lose weight on sweets. I'm just kidding. But that's what I think about mine. You just got to exercise the next day, okay? <laughs> Greed, gambling, gluttony, fourth one, girls. Or guys. All right, for girls, it's the guys. Guys, it's the girls. Got to avoid that. Uh, choosing bad relationships. Listen, I, I'm very transparent when I say this. I repaid my entire mistakes in my 20s for my entire 30s because I got this wrong. I should have been enjoying the success in my 30s, not in my 40s. So if you want to, by the way, did I face that enemy? I faced it head on and I lost. I lost 10 years of my life. Okay, so if you want to avoid losing 10 years of life, consider this as you uh, go down the journey of you becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Last one. Make sense so far? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, the last enemy for you to avoid is the trappings of success in a good life. <laughs> what? The same place you're trying to get to, you say that's an enemy? Yeah. It's an enemy if you lose this. Gratitude, yep. humility, avoid becoming self-righteous, how, how many times uh, as a kid you thought that growing up rich people were jerks and you avoid rich people, that's the way, this is the way I grew up, right? How many, guys, how many guys would safely say that when you were growing up, rich people, you thought rich people were jerks? Right? And the, the crazy part is, don't you want to become a rich person one day? Yeah. Wealthy person one day? Yes. Generous person one day? So I told myself, when I get to that point, I'm going to do my part to make sure I change that stereotype. That people feel that we're approachable, that we, uh, we're, we're, we're humble. So... What are your thoughts, as I wrap up, what are your thoughts about these points I just shared with you? What's some of your feedback? I'd love to know what you're thinking. Um, I feel like some of them are connected. Like, for example, um, you'll always lack urgency if you don't have a sense of paranoia. Because if you're not paranoid about certain things, then the urgency won't be there. So I feel like a lot of these things connect. All right. Good. I think the... I have one point about life. Good. 100%. But by the way, in this journey, everybody's going to face this. But it's up to you to avoid it or deal with the consequences of not dealing with it. You, you hit it head on. Anybody else? Yeah. Yep. Um, Rich? I want to piggyback <coughs> what my wife was saying. Because, I, you know, every time I have these meetings, and thank you, Matt, for mm -hmm. taking your time. For sure. This, you got it. I start to put myself in it yeah. and see where I am in here and start checking off where I can start fixing. And the biggest part for me was the paranoia part. Yep. And maybe I, I might start, not maybe, let me change my mind. Um, I'm going to give the opportunity for my wife to manage the money more. Because I'm so used to controlling yeah. what comes in yep. and what comes out. Yep. And you said it. <laughs> you don't even, you keep $500 on you don't even look at the account. Yeah. But that just resonated with me. Yeah. Maybe I should stop looking at it. Because <laughs> sometimes looking at the account makes you comfortable. Yeah. Because you're, 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 making, you're making good money with this thing. Yeah. And based on where you come from, you know, from, from you growing up, you're making a whole lot more money than everybody you grew up with. And psychologically, in your mind, I'm ahead of everybody else. But... What, by the way, what do we say for hundred thousand dollars earnings with inside MSM? What are we going to set up for you? It's minimum wage. It's minimum wage. And if, if, you, if you stay at hundred thousand dollars for too long, we end up setting a GoFundMe account for you. <laughs> In your honor, we're going to put your picture on it and everything. <laughs> 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 
But yes, you're right. That'd be a good conversation, the money conversation. For me, when I got married to my wife, I just surrendered everything to her. I said, okay, God, I, you, you've given me this woman in my life. I trust you with her. And you know, your word says that uh, the, the, the blessing to a man is a, is a, is a wife. So I'm going to trust my wife. I'm going to trust her discernment. I'm going to trust her judgment. I'm going to trust what she sees from me, even though I don't like it, because she is very good at having me. You know, she's an S, right? So she's very good at helping me draw boundaries and stuff like that. And I've just learned to trust her and all that. And yeah, yeah. Oh, so by the way, that's another thing. Have a process where you have more skin in the game to get things. Okay? So, for example, whatever thing that you like. Give me, give me something that you want to, give me something that you want to get. I love sneakers. Jays, okay. So have a goal. For example, for me, last year, two years ago, if I go four wide, I get a pair of Jays. Right? If I go eight wide, I get two. So guess what happened that year? Wide, 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 eight, eight, eight. <laughs> but I had to go wide first, and then I reward myself. Now, this year, different. If I go eight wide, I get baseball cards, sports cards. That's just my, my new thing, right? I, I get that type of thing. So for yourself, create yourself a personal award. Don't rob yourself of going through the skin in the game to get that award. Delayed gratification. Right? So, for example, I want to take my wife. Uh, we have a certain goal that next March we're going to go see the Northern Lights. Right? We're going to go back to the cold again in Canada because I want to see the Northern Lights. Uh, and I can't remember the name of the thing. It's a, it's a nine hour flight to get there. But once you get to the Northern Lights, you can, t you can literally touch the sky. And the Northern Lights, you know the color, right? It's like that green. It's green, baby. <laughs> it's green. green. Right? Yeah. And then, and then I, already have, I already have the photographer. He's going to take a hero shot, he's going to be lying on the ground. And we're going to be like this, touching the Northern Lights, right? it will be a hell of an Instagram shot, right? So by the way, I've already thought about these things. That's what drives me to make sure we hit those goals. So by the time next March comes around, you're going to see us with pictures of the Northern Lights. You know, Sheena and I in the cold, but that's our thing. It's the closest for us. To me, the Northern Lights is the closest thing to the, uh, to the gateway of heaven. It's right there, bro. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. So, ha so I have a monthly thing with, with, with Pam. Have a, have a monthly thing, have a quarterly thing, have a semi-annual thing, have an annual thing. Reward yourself. I like things, but you got to do the work first. Yeah. All right, I'll start with Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay, cool. Need any feedbacks on the uh, sound points? Yes, back there. Uh, mine was um, good enough, so never settle for just good enough. And the other one was that... Everything in life will be hard, and pretty soon your hard will be easy. So this whole training was very powerful, and like um, Rich said, I'm always looking to implement, you know, not just right, but seeing, okay, where am I at, and where can I implement this to become better? So thank you so much for the training. For sure. By the way, the hardest first, hundred, for the first hardest uh, goal to make is 100,000. And then guess what happens? You go to 100,000, and boom, 200,000, and 300,000, 400,000. For us, the hardest thing for us to make our first million. <coughs> now, now we're leapfrogging from one million to, to two million, just three, four years. You know, we're doubling our income in the millions. It's, it's, it's harder to do that. You go from 100,000, 100,000, 200,000 is easier than to go from one million to two million. It's a lot harder because it's, it's, a, it's a bigger number. Yeah. yeah. But uh, for sure. You know, you want, you want to make sure that uh, for right now, think about the income that you love to be making. Write it down in your notes. The income that you love to be making right now, each month. Put it down in your notes. What, what, what do we got? What income? How much would you like to make? Give me a number. Um, 50,000. 50,000 a month. Awesome. Good. Give me a number. Somebody give me a number. 15,000. 15,000. One five. Today, today, today. Today. 25,000 25, a month. 50,000 a month. 15,000 a month. Okay, think about how much of a stretch that is, it, right? Based on what you know about the business now, how long will it take you to get to 25, 50, 15,000 a month? Not that much, okay, it's a stretch, but not that much of a stretch. Think about what happens when you have a team now that's also duplicating that. I was, I was gonna show you back the numbers. Because look how quickly this, 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 has, this has a compound. Listen, sales people, this area right here, this is, this is linear thinking. You, know, you guys know about my linear? You clock in, clock out. Sale commission. Salary, salary. Linear. You got to do something to get. Okay. Linear. But what's this income? 
Compound, co compounding and exponential. Because you got to do enough work to get enough people in your business, to get licensed, to start running your own business, to become MDs, to become senior vice president before this thing starts taking on a life of its own. So for right now, if I decide to stop doing this business and say, hey, listen, uh, Candy, Ellie, you know, Sheena and I, we got, you know, we're going to take a step back and because we're taking a step back, we want you to take a step back too. Elgin and Benny, listen, <laughs> we're taking a step back. We want you to stop your multi-million dollar dreams and just be hanging out the current income that you're at. What do you think they would tell me? <laughs> get out my way. Lead, follow, or get out the way. Why? Because they got their own goals and dreams they want to aspire to. Imagine having a team full of that. Lead, follow, get out the way, Matt. Psh, right now, choose a lead. It's the fun part. Now, uh, you know, Sheen and I, we're, we're looking at, we're looking at 11 years of us doing this, but we, we want to compress 11 years within the next three years. You, you know what I mean by saying that? So, back to the calculator. Who's got a calculator? The average person in America, the average median household income in America is 62000 a year. Okay? The average median, those, according to IRS, people file taxes based on this address. The average household income across New York, San Francisco, Fort Lauderdale, Texas, whatever, it's 62000 a year. Average across America. Okay? This business has paid us $7.1 million in six years. Okay, so, so put $7.1 million into your calculator and then divide $62,000 into it. What, what do you get? 114. So 114 years. <laughs> so 114, so in other words, if you're making 62,000 a year, it'll take you 114 years to. <laughs> versus doing the tough work now, now not eventually, this is eventually. <laughs> but if you want to do it now, this is 6.5 years. What do you want to do? Now. By the way, even if you screw this up, it takes you times two. It takes you 13 years. You're still okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I love about capitalism and entrepreneurship. Because it doesn't care how long you've been around. It doesn't care the color of your skin. It doesn't care about who you grew up with, what you grew up with, didn't you, what didn't you have. Armed with what you have today, the licenses that you have today, and the work that you're willing to do, you can catch up to a lot of people. But some of you in here might beat our record. Because you're figuring this stuff out now. I, I didn't have this training when I first started my career. So what I'm telling you is we're building a new generation, which might be you here in this room, if you're willing to do things now, not later. Not eventually. So, I got more stuff to cover with you guys. There's some stuff here, but I'll share with you over dinner and uh, cigars if you guys are coming out with us. So, with that being said, I'll hand it back to Kahindi and Ellie. Thank you for having me here, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, man. Hey, thank you, man. Wow. Guys. Nice. How about your husband? What is Kelly? Woo! Thanks, man. It's a surprise today. Yeah. Thank you. By the way, is the world qualified for MMA? Yes. Oh,